This is every single book I read in the month of June. That's 12 books, 3,933 pages exactly, I counted. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to go from most favorite to least favorite. So first off is Kill Creek. It was a really fantastic audiobook that I listened to, and I actually had a really big audiobook month for some reason. I'll go ahead and pop the cover up here so that you guys can see it. But it's more than your typical haunted house story. For Famous horror novelists are invited to spend the night in America's most haunted house, and they leave with a lot more than the publicity they were initially seeking. Something dark is nipping at their heels. The characters are fantastic. You'll both root for them and conspire against them. I had such a great time reading this book. It's something you've got to check out if you're a horror fan. My next favorite was Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I loved this. It's about two college roommates, uh, Eric and Victor, who start experimenting with adrenaline and near-death experiences, and they theorize that some people, under the right circumstances, can actually develop extraordinary powers. But when they try to turn their theory into reality, uh, chaos ensues, and ten years later, Victor is out for revenge against Eric. So it's absolutely fantastic, great characters, and in my opinion, might be better than the series V.E. Schwab is most famous for. So if you're a fan of hers, or if you're looking to experience her work for the first time, this is going to be a great one for you. It's got vibes of heroes and X-Men, so if that's your thing, this is for you. The next one I read was actually a non-fiction, a self-development book called The 5 a.m. Miracle. Now, it's not just about waking up early. This book is about productivity, and it's already been such a game changer for me, and I only finished reading it a few days ago. So if you've been feeling overwhelmed, like you've got far too many projects going on, uh, this is a book for you. You've got to check it out. Absolute game changer for me, and I'm sure it's going to be helpful to literally anyone who needs it. The next one was another self-development book on audiobook that I will absolutely be returning to again and again. It is by Gary John Bishop and it is called Unfuck Yourself. It's about how to get out of your head and into your life. It's absolutely fantastic. It's short, concise, it's to the point. The audiobook is about three hours long, so you could consider it a long podcast. You could listen to it in sections, and I will absolutely be repeating some of those sections when I need a little bit of motivation. It's essentially a tough love pep talk from a no-nonsense Scotsman, and it's absolutely fantastic. The next one is Scythe by Neil Schusterman, another audiobook for me. I was on a roll this month. Scythe is set in a utopian world where we have conquered disease, starvation, death, and so much so that no one dies of natural causes. So in order to control the population, certain individuals are appointed as scythes who have the grim task of sentencing death to selected members of the populace. Now in Scythe, two teenagers are unwillingly apprenticed to become size themselves, they must master the art of death or be forced to face that fate themselves. So absolutely fantastic book. Schusterman has such a dark originality that it's great to see returned after his Unwind series, which I absolutely devoured as a teenager. So definitely read these if you like YA, if you like dystopian, these are for you. You can also check out his Unwind series. I've got a really fantastic nonfiction recommendation for my more scientific, more nerdy friends here. This is called Deep by James Nestor. He was a journalist on assignment in Greece when he witnessed something incredible. He saw a man with no gear dive 300 feet into the ocean, come back up on one breath, smiling and happy. He had witnessed for the first time the little known art of free diving, and it took him on a whirlwind adventure where he learned to free dive himself and learned about the ocean, marine life, and ourselves in a depth that hasn't really been discussed yet. So you must absolutely check this out. It's fantastic to listen to, really, really fascinating. You could consider it a really long, incredible podcast, but definitely check this out if you're into marine life, if you're into science, if you're just into the natural world in general. So those were my six favorites, so if you only want the best of the best, go ahead and log off this video now, but if you want to know what books I thought were still great and worth your time, but maybe something you should borrow instead of buy, stick around. 
The first one was The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Now, as you probably know, I loved Riley Sager's first novel, Final Girls, which actually made it to my best of 2017 list. This one was still fun, but it didn't have quite the same edge or the same speed as Final Girls did. So still worth the read, just not quite as addictive, and I wasn't quite as in love with it as Final Girls. This one is set in a summer camp for children of the elite. Uh, 15 years ago, three girls went missing from a cabin without a trace. One girl in that cabin remained, and now, 15 years later, she is back uh, at the place where it all happened, and it's as if the past is haunting her. This author is known for a more 80s slasher flick vibe, and that's definitely still evident in this, so it is really fun to read. And if you're a fan of Riley Sager, don't miss out on this, but if you are reading this author's work for the first time, I'm going to recommend Final Girls. Now here's one that I thought was a really cute, simple summer read. It's called Wild Blue Wonder. It has an absolutely gorgeous cover. This one's also set in a summer camp, but it has a much more beautiful style. This one is about coming of age, it's about grief, and it's a little bit of magical realism. Uh, it's set on a really picturesque, a uh, summer camp landscape in Maine where there's this quirky family who are basically hippies and it's just really fun. It's a fun light read but it also tackles some uh, sadder subjects so really good if that's your thing and just enjoyable. The only reason that I gave it down stars a little bit is because I wasn't necessarily super in love with it and sometimes the writing could be a little jumpy so worth the read just not five stars worthy. The next one that I think is worthy of your time, but maybe not of your money, is Watch Me Disappear by Janelle Brown. In this novel, a Berkeley mom with an enviable life goes missing off of a trail on a solo hike. And it's been a year since she's been gone. Her husband is writing a memoir about their life together, and her daughter has started to experience visions of her mother, but still alive and telling her one thing, search for me. As they both start searching for truth about the woman they both loved, they discover that truth isn't finite, but rather a reflection of what we most want to see. So I thought this was a really great book. It was a beautiful, atmospheric, character-driven writing style that was easy to read in one sitting. I just found the ending a little disappointing, and so that made me not love it quite so much as a five-star book, but still worth the read and enjoyable. The next one is a non-fiction business development book called Culture Code, all about how to manage culture in your groups. Now, I found some of the information helpful, but I'm a fan of concise, um, to-the-point, non-fluff uh, non-fiction. So I felt that this one actually veered a little bit and that some of the examples were really lengthy. So I couldn't get behind it 100%, but I do think it's worth a quick skim if you are in business or if you are a manager. Another mystery, surprise, surprise, this is After Nightfall by A.J. Banner. Now, this book's really interesting because it was hard to rate. So it has everything you could ask for in a whodunit. There's a lot of mystery, there's a lot of different plot points going on, but it's almost too efficiently written. So there's no character development other than to distinguish who's who. There's no character psyches to dive into. Now, that being said, uh, what it lacked in depth, it made up for with ease to read. So really fun. You could tackle this in an afternoon if you wanted to, but if you are a character person and you can't stand a novel without a lot of character development, then go ahead and skip this one. But if you just want the fun plot of a whodunit, this could be a great one for you. The setting for this is that after an engagement party with a bunch of guests who have far too tangled a history to still all be friends, uh, the next morning one of those guests turns up dead. So this is the story of figuring out who done it. So those are all the books that I felt were really enjoyable reads. They were my absolute favorite ever, but that's okay. They're still worth the time, still worth the read. And now we're gonna get into my section where I say skip it, but it's not worth your time. The kind of books that I read so that you don't have to. Now for me, that first one is gonna be Unbury Carol by Josh Mallerman. Now, some of you know that I was a absolutely huge, huge fan of Bird Box by the same author when it came out in 2014. Bird Box was uh, incredibly fast-paced, terrifying, edge-of-your-seat sort of suspense that is often unmatched 
in the genre. So it's a long time to wait four years for this next novel and I have to admit that I was a little disappointed and by a little disappointed I mean a lot. <laughs> so this is more of a meandering uh, western type novel. It's a little more lethargic to read and this uh, plot of this like western vibe is more tenuous than substantial so for me it was quite a dull read a lethargic read and uh, if it had not been Josh Mallerman I wouldn't have finished it so I kept hoping that I would like it and it does sort of pick up by the end but for me uh, that ending better be amazing if I did not like the first three quarters of the book and I just didn't feel that way about this one so uh, if you are a Bird Box fan, just don't go into this expecting the same level of thrill and excitement and sheer terror that you experience with Bird Box because frankly, it's a completely different animal. That is it. Those are the 12 books that I did finish reading this month, but I want to give a little dishonorable mention to my did not finish book of this month. And that book was The Favorite Sister by Jessica Knoll. Now, Jessica Knoll has reached celebrity author status. She wrote The Luckiest Girl Alive, which was insanely popular. And the press for this book in turn was also fantastic. So naturally I was pretty excited about it. And this was my first um, experience with her book with her writing. So unfortunately I found it uh, of a cluttered sort of disorganized writing style with characters that I just couldn't connect to and an overall cynical mood and style that I just wasn't feeling. So after 61 pages I decided not to finish this one. Uh, I've talked to a few people who experienced a, a similar reaction. I'm sure some people will love it but I think for this one it might just be the case that the PR surrounding it is absolutely fantastic. So to the PR teams I say hats off to you um, but for me this book is a little overhyped. So that is it. Those are the 12 books I read in June. Let me know which of these books you are most likely to read. I would love to know. And also let me know what your favorite book from June was. Maybe I need another book for my TBR stack. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Can I tell you something? If you liked this video, you're gonna like the next one. So hit that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it, and hey, leave me a comment below because I love talking to you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.